is a real day and thank you so much for coming. This is indeed a, a, a joy. It's, uh, it's, it's a happy occasion for us, the, the children of Richard and Pinky Johnson. Uh, we just delighted to have you. The purpose of our gathering here today is to unveil or dedicate a memorial, a monument in memory of our parents for the things that they tried to do uh, during their lifetime. And we, we, we're delighted to be able to do this, but more so for your presence. We, we thank you for coming. We have a program, and we'll follow the outlines of the program. We have scripture, prayer, and open remarks. Now, anyone who desires to make remarks, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, we following that we have the necrology, and following the ne necrology we'll have the litany of remembrance, and that litany of rem remembrance is on the back of this uh, program. Following that we'll have the closing prayer and blessing of the refreshments, and following that we'll have the unveiling of the monument. Thank you so much. So now we will have the scripture, and the scripture will be read by Thurman, who is the oldest grandson, the oldest grandchild of the family, Thurman Hosey. And friends, well, our scripture reading this, I say this morning, this afternoon, Joshua at the fourth chapter of the book of Joshua. Can you all hear me back there? Yes, sir. Oh, fourth yeah. chapter of the book of Joshua. Started with the fifth verse. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan, and take up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this, this may be a sign among you that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye these stones? Then ye shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it passed over Jordan. The waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. And verse 9 and Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests which bear the Ark of the Covenant stood. And they are there until this day. Then we go into Exodus, the 20th chapter. Starting with the ninth verse. And it reads, Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thy nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within the gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath, and hallowed it. Verse 12, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God give it thee. Amen. Amen. Prayer. Wendell Johnson, the youngest son of Richard and Peggy, youngest child. <laughs>
and the members of our mother and father and all that they tried to instill and do as they journey this old uh, on this side. We thank you for them right now, Father. Thank you. And Lord, not only that, we thank you for our friends and family that came to share with us on this great occasion. We thank you right now, Father. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless this community right now. This neighbors, my neighbors, sure. And Lord, bless our government in same like manner. And Lord, help us all to remember the, the tolls of each and every day always reap benefits sooner or later. And we thank Hallelujah. you right now, Father. Yes, we thank you right now, Father. And Lord, bless you now as we begin to take our seat. Bless this great occasion, the purpose of which you have given and the remembrance in which all the memories that come back to our hearts and in our minds. And Lord, we thank you for continuing to bless the modern community. In Jesus' name we pray. Church today, amen. 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 again. Amen. God bless you. We will not have opening remarks, and anyone who desires to make remarks may do so at, at this time. So if you just stand up or raise your hand and I'll, uh, and, and we, the, the first person that's going to give remarks is our representative. Yes. Representative Lonnie Hosey, representing District South Carolina House District 91. Representative, it's you. If you don't mind my keeping my hat on, because the sun is shining real bright and hard on my bald spot. <laughs> we give praises to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for being here this afternoon with you. I wouldn't want to be another place because I have had some experience with this family all of my days. And I knew the Reverend Richard Johnson and Sister Pinky Johnson ever since I was a little boy. And I knew how hard they both fought for civil rights in our community. We cannot do enough for the memory of them. But I thank the family for considering this idea to put up this monument in, in, their, in memory of them. You know, we work hard sometimes and never, never, never realize how much people care. And sometimes we have to go on before that happens in our outside our hearing. But Richard and Pinky Johnson enjoyed the fruits of their labor because they saw things happening by taking people to the polls to vote and getting them registered and those kinds of things that they they did. And plus, every time I met the Reverend, he always had some good advice to talk to you about. As the growing up young fellows, what you ought to do about life, how you should do it. And I can see something in you. He might have made me what I am today because he gave me that motivation. We need to encourage more than to discourage. And that's what they did. And I tell you what, from the state of South Carolina, as I come before you this afternoon, Doris and I must could leave you. I hope we can see the complete celebration, but we will not be able to stay to eat. And that's going to be a good thing for me. But anyway, uh, we, we, we have other things at the church. We got frozen pipes and those kinds of things at the church that we got to get ready for service tomorrow. And we got some gas mails around there too, so we got to get some things done. So please allow us to move on. But I want you to remember that this state, South Carolina, with this House of Representatives of 124 members and 46 senators and a governor, McMaster, serving in our state legislature, welcome you to Martin, South Carolina, and we thank you for what you've done for these great people 
who believe in their country, who believe in their community, who believe in God first. We just thank you so much. And I'd like to further this occasion by getting some information on both of them and getting a resolution drawn up in the House of Representatives in South Carolina in their honor for your memory a memorabilia and that you would keep in order for the rest of your life and carry on. I know that they fought hard. I know that they, their spirit is looking over us right now. They believed in this thing, saying, my country, tis of thee. Sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where thy fathers died. Land of thy pilgrim's prize. From every mountain side. Yeah, yeah. They say, let freedom yeah, reign. Yeah, yeah. Let freedom reign. Yeah, yeah. And that's what they have done today, yeah, yeah. throughout their lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for them. Amen. Yeah, Representative Hosey? Anyone else? Yes. Mr. William Holmes, former mayor of the city of Allendale, South Carolina. Mayor Holmes. To uh, Richard Johnson and to all the families and friends of the Reverend Richard Johnson and thank you, Johnson. I'd just like to stand and heard the expression, given a testimony. Yes. Everybody know what a testimony oh, is? Yes, yes. Being an eyewitness. Mm -hmm. Now you can't be an eyewitness unless you see something out of your own eyes. Mm -hmm. well, I can't eyewitness for you. I can't eyewitness for you. But I can eyewitness for myself. Reverend Johnson, long before I even thought about uh, getting involved in politics, he was on the battlefield marching for justice, marching for freedom, marching for civil rights. Long before I even knew who Reverend Richard Johnson was, he was paving the way for me and a lot of other folks, not only in Martin or Allendale County, but also in Allendale. He did not live in Allendale. But I'm a product of his work. Amen. Amen. Directly and indirectly. One of the things that I admire about Reverend Johnson is that he had the bravery. Now, some of those things I didn't witness myself. But you can capture, I got a video, I captured Reverend Johnson relaying reciting and reliving the history that he participated in Allendale County. Mm -hmm. So I know a few things about that history. It is good to capture things like on video and recording. So capture memory lasts a lifetime. Yeah. So the thing that Reverend Rick Johnson did for our community, Allendale, <coughs> the whole county. It may have gone unnoticed during the time he was out there fighting for our civil rights and for freedom and, and justice. You recall he spent many, many nights traveling up and down that road from Martin to the courthouse in Allendale. I wasn't there now. I wasn't there. But I heard Reverend Johnson saying these things and they, they got captured on video, the history. Back in 92, he re relayed the history to us for those who were coming after him. I was elected in 1990, I was elected in 1976. Well, my, my brain is about gone. <laughs> uh, the, the mayor of the town of Allendale. I'll give you a little short from bio. Um, I graduated from Allendale High School back in uh, 1960. I went off to State College for a while, got discouraged, dropped out, went into the Air Force, spent a few years in the Air Force, came back, went to Voorhees and got my degree in, in mathematics and computer science. In 1976, I decided to run for, for mayor. 
I didn't alone now, the people in the community. Now, who set the stage for that that kind of activity? Right. Reverend Johnson and many others. Now. Reverend Johnson set that stage. We, I am not, I don't have to say who, what you are, but I am a product, politically speaking now, of the work that Reverend Johnson did in this community. When people were afraid, that was for your time, to go up to the county courthouse and register, mm -hmm. they had to count the, the, the jelly beans in the jar, yeah. they had to recite the Constitution, well, it's almost could have been a candidate for the Supreme Court, isn't it? I told you that. <laughs> <laughs> this is what, you know, a lot of young folks don't, don't realize that. This is what we had to do, even to register the vote. Now they got all this other kind of obstacles so that we have difficulty voting. But I appreciate and I thank you. One thing I had, he lived long enough, Brother John lived long enough, that he saw the product, the fruit of his labor. And I personally thank him for the hard work the work that he did in our little county. Even though he was not a, a citizen of the town of Alameda, he worked as hard and worked something worked harder than the citizen of Alameda. Got me elected and others elected in Alameda. And I thank God that it was so encouraging with the scripture. That scripture reminded me in Joshua, there was a train there was a change of leadership. Moses had died. God said, Moses, my service is dead. Then the leadership came to Joshua. And what did Joshua have to, to, to encourage him to keep him going? He had the commandments of the Lord. As we walk with the Lord, the Lord will be a light to our path. Everything great in this country, in our community, could not have been accomplished without the help of the Lord. So I thank you, Richard Johnson, for giving the invitation uh, to come and, and witness this program. There are many things else I, got, I can say. Richard Johnson, the Reverend Richard Johnson, he's on my YouTube. You got a pencil, write it down, YouTube. Uh, under William Holmes, that's my channel name, William Holmes. If you type in and you put in Richard Johnson, you'll pop up on your, on your smartphone. And you can have that and listen to his history. And I thank Richard Johnson for, for remembering my little contribution to thank the family you. and to the family history. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. I had an opportunity to come up under Reverend Johnson and took the paper Johnson. I ate many meals back in the house back there. They always cooked. Amen. And I remember back in the 60s, Reverend Johnson quit with his, feet, with his farming to come to help us around Allendale. And one day they were getting ready to pick some oranges and set to Columbia. And now we're sending one person, one oranges and one person Columbia. So they would have the meeting seven o'clock, but they had the meeting six o'clock. So when all of us came out there, they were looking at us walking out the courthouse. And so um, Reverend Johnson and Lewis White set, made a telephone call, and they had to have the meeting again. That's when they sent about seven ordinances to Columbia. And another time, we were sitting up in Central Church. Somebody came by and threw a rock with a letter on it. And they were going to bomb the church. 12 o'clock that night. 
and all of Justin told him, let's buy it in the word of prayer. And let's sing some songs. We're not going nowhere. And what we did, we put they put one man in a tree in front of the church. They give noise in case somebody come out with something to throw in the church. It happened so, he prayed and nothing didn't happen that night. Yeah. Also, what I like about Reverend Johnson, he wasn't just that. He, he, he looked after all the young men and taught the young men in this community. Yeah. You know, I think about years ago how the older men, when they see a bunch of young boys together, they would come and talk to these young boys and tell them about the Bible and how to live their life, which was good. We need more of that today. Yeah. Some of that line we felt in my time, we fell short with that. And one, one or two people can't do it. Take everybody to try to help our children. Because they really need it now. Because things not going to be easy for them out in this world today. But anyway, I just came to tell that. But I just wanted a little bit of time I had with him. And the things he did for us. And I mean, he spent plenty of time around my hope now. Sometimes they would come in, come in there on Friday. And don't come out to Sunday. Don't eat nothing. Too many people don't do that anymore. That's right. At this time, I just want to thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. God bless the family. I want to leave it to Christ. I want to minister to the family. I heard a lot of comments about what he did for the men. But in, in the early 70s, he opened his pulpit up to women. Because I'm one that preached for him. And he came and preached for me. And that was very unusual. That was when they were beating on us. <laughs> the gun was caught for women preachers. But <laughs> he stood behind us. I, I, I respect him as a father in the ministry. And I, I knew him before I knew anybody else down here because he was that kind of a person. Just want to say that.
good, hard woman yes. person. Yes. I tell you the truth. They were just like my mother and my father to me. She was supposed to be my cousin, but she was actually like an aunt because she was so giving. I just thank God for them. They worked we went with him through the precinct. They wouldn't let us vote. I was down there. I was a secretary. They lied about the people going in. I said, it's there because I was with the lady when we pick them up last night. <laughs> Had them in the store underneath the cash register. I wouldn't move till, till they come and got them. Then mm. Reverend Badger, he rolled that big old thing across that track. He said, I said, I said they're in the store, Reverend. Let's get them. So we really there. Y'all know who run this store at that time. <laughs> and there was the papers under there so we could have our meeting. I mean, we went up and down those roads all over the place. We had meetings at houses and everywhere. But y'all have a beautiful family. My cousin here, yeah. mm -hmm. I know y'all never forget them. And I love them. And they did good work for all the community. Yeah. All the yeah. Black, white, purple, gold, it didn't make no difference. Right. Like they feed you now. You can bring me food all the time. <laughs> Raw food from the stove bring to me. I said, oh, no, we're hungry. Those <laughs> know they can cook and they know they care. Yeah. But y'all just pray that our community will continue to be blessed mm -hmm. and that we love one another. But we got so much, so many things going on. Mm -hmm. And people just talk about people sometimes for nothing. Mm -hmm. Bad mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. They don't pray no more. Man. You gotta pray. Mm -hmm. And pray. you gotta trust in God. Because right. this battle is not over. You got a long way to go. Thank Lord. you very much. I'm a fan. I'm the um I'm the granddaughter. perspective is a little different because I wasn't in a date with all these stories. So I didn't understand the contribution that he made to everybody. The only thing I remember is what he always tried to conceal in me. Um, I, was, I was raised as a Muslim and I remember at six years old we used to have a religious debate. At six years old. And um, it was funny because his at the, the end of the whole situation it was First and foremost, put God first. Amen. And always try to walk down the right path, the path that's going to be pleasing to God. And he instilled that in us so much. The only thing I ever saw was like a lot of people coming in and out. And I used to be like, why all these people coming to my grandparents' house? Why are they coming and eating up our food? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I used to always watch these things. But what he put in me was a certain personality, a personality that I see that he exemplified because he lived it through everybody else. So yeah. he instilled in us hard work. Mm -hmm. He instilled in us standing up for the weak. You know, standing up against wrong. Mm -hmm. And irregardless of what the cost is, because the cost can't be greater than being oppressed by the wrong. So as long as you have God behind you, you know, your fight is always going to be successful, irregardless of the outcome that somebody else might see. But, um, and my, my grandmother, I used to ask her, because every time I, I seen it, she had just a peaceful soul, except when you did something wrong. All know? right now. Amen. And, <laughs> and the peace came out. <laughs> when she put the peace on the side and came and dealt with the problem. But, um, you know, I always used to ask her, because it, it amazed me. First of all, what amazed me is we spent so much time in church. I was like, why we got to spend so much time in church? We was here for the summer. So I was from New York. And I'm like, why are we spending so much time in church? We going to church almost every day. Um, and, and my granddad said, this will help your spirit. That was his only, this will help your spirit. And I would come out, pull my, my book. That's not a good book to read. Read this. It would be the Bible. And so, you know, and I would ask my grandma. I was like, Grandma, why are you always humming them church sin, hymns? And she just looked at me and she said, Babe, I'm humming them because I don't mind. It's the devil's playground. All right now. And when she said that, it just went over my head. Mm -hmm. But I understand when your mind is focused on God, your work will be God-like. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm hearing all these stories and I am overwhelmed by everything that he's done. Because I, I always knew he was a great person. He was my granddad. I always knew she, she was a great <coughs> person because she was my grandma. And they loved us unconditionally. The only condition they had is that we always try to put God first. Okay? But, you know, the, the things that I've seen, I, it, I didn't 
have the adult mind to make the connection. The people that I seen that loved my grandparents as much as I did, and sometimes I'd be a little jealous. <laughs> That's my grandma. That's my granddad. They need, you know. But I wanted to say that to say that I am uh, full, yeah. overwhelmed yeah. with the work that he's done. And that the legacy that he left mm -hmm. in everybody and also in the generation. And it makes me to do it. Amen. Amen. So Amen. that's all I'm going to say. Amen. 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 Yeah, she walked off the campus. 
I got to kick him off. He held up my gun and my dress. <laughs> shall surely come, the appointed hour makes haste. When I must stand before my judge and pass the solemn test. Pinky May Johnson, 
October 23rd, 1945 through August 21st, 2015. The lovely chief of all my joys, thy sovereign of my heart, how could I bear to hear thy voice pronounce the sound depart? Will Myrtle Johnson Williams, September 16th, 1941 through November 12th, 2016. Jesus, I throw my arms around and hang upon his breast without a gracious smile from thee. My spirit cannot rest. Berta May Johnson Ingram, October 3rd, 1930 through May 4th, 2017. Amen. In remembrance. If you turn your, 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 your program over, there's a, a litany of remembrance honoring Reverend Richard Johnson Sr. and Mrs. Pinky Smith Johnson, January 20th, 2018, and we ask that you would join in with us in the litany of remembrance. In the rising of the sun and in the, its going down, we remember them. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. In the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of the summer, we remember them. In the rustling leaves and in the beauty of autumn. We remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends. We remember them. When we are weary and need of strength. We remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart. We remember them. When we have joys and yearn to share, we remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us. And as we remember them.
When they go on that job, they was called everything else. But when they got to church, they was called brother so-and-so, trustee so-and-so, deacon so-and-so, usher so-and-so. That's the only time they had a title to their name. And I remember that. I remember my cousin Johnson. I remember him as he would preach. I preached for him, he preached for me. He would teach, and I would listen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This means so much to us. To me especially. To me especially. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father. We call to ask that you would have mercy on this group. Have mercy on these children. Have mercy on this gathering. Have mercy, dear God, on each and every one of us. Everyone home that is represented here today, go and bless their homes in the name of Jesus. Because you said, where there are two or three, when we assemble ourselves together and get on one accord, you would be in the midst of us. So come now, Father, and stay with us. Don't leave us by ourselves. We can't do nothing without you. Bless us, Heavenly Father, from the eldest to the youngest, from the largest to the smallest, from the fastest to the slowest. And we will always give you the glory, the power. In your name, Jesus. And Father, bless the food that was prepared for the nourishment of our soul. That we'll be able to run on in your name. Yes. And continue on in your name. We kind it all be done and blessed. And accepted as what it is. In the name of Jesus. Y'all remember that. We have come this by faith, doing what? Leaning on the Lord. What was she doing? Trusting in His holy word. That's what Brother Johnson and Sister Johnson was about. He never failed me yet. And we can all cry. Oh. Yeah, it's all for you, though. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> 